Hey, come in, sir. Morning, ma'am. Morning, sir. Morning, sir. Morning, sir. Thank, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Mm. So, is from Uttar Pradesh? Native to, um, natively to Uttar Pradesh, sir. Yes, and sir. And settled in Kolkata? Yes, sir. For how many years? So, almost 19 years now, sir. 19 years. Uh, any specific reasons for uh, shifting to Calcutta? So, my father was posted in Kolkata, sir. Now, where is serving? Sir, he is in Kolkata, sir. Which, which okay. company? Okay, uh, Bridge and Roof Company India Limited. It's a government of India undertaking and deals okay. in the construction sector, sir. Okay. okay. So, he is still serving? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Tell me something about your this application of 5S. Work, workplace performance. So, the application of 5S and workplace performance improvement is a technique which, as the name suggests, hel helps in improving workplace productivity. At the same time, it has other ancillary benefits, for example, like uh, clean, uh, cleaning up the workplace and like, generating revenues out of the scrap material that what are produced. What is 5S? I don't understand. So, 5S is a Japanese technique which involves five activities that aim at workplace performance improvement, sir. What are so, those? the five SR CD, that means sorting, Siton, which means setting in order, SESO, which means cleaning, Shitsuke, which means uh, standardizing, and there's one more S that I cannot recall right now. So where did you apply this? Where did you apply this? So, there was this, we, uh, in my college days, we had this system of like, car making teams in our campus sir. so there was a room allotted to them called the boiler room so the application of 5s was actually done on the boiler room itself sir football you play football or you watch football sir i have played football in my college days and when i was in kolkata i have played football uh, after i have moved here i have actually stopped playing but i have been watching football continuously okay. uh, tell me something about santosh trophy is it going on where yes sir so santosh trophy is has its origins in the pre in the colonial era, sir, when the Maharaja of Santosh created a trophy mainly for the East uh, East Bengal regions and parts of Northeast India, sir. Today, it's a premier Indian trophy, and it usually sees participation from states and certain organizations like the services and the IOCL. So, currently, Santosh trophy is going on. Usually it was where held in New Delhi, but I'm not sure if this because last year it was moved to Hyderabad, and so I'm not sure if like the location of the Trasantos Trophy this year also. Okay, what are government bonds? We hear government bonds, government securities. What are those? So, government securities or GSEX as we call them are financial instruments of which of which are of the nature of debentures, sir, and they are issued by the Reserve Bank on behalf of government, and they carry a sovereign guarantee on them. So, so why those are issued? So they are issued for so that the government can raise money from the like the bond market, and and the investors can get a assured return at assured and as well as a good return on them. So, and I am told government is also buying uh, like this U.S. government bonds. Our government also is buying. Yes, what sir. far they are doing that? So, if I am to present an analysis on why the Indian government is buying the US dominated government bonds, it could be a reason because US is known as a flagship economy or a stable economy. So, mm. a ship, like buying US government bonds give, gives the government of India a like guaranteed return from the, like, the investments that are made in the US capital market. And this would also help augment the financial, the forex reserves of our country. So, this is my analysis on so when we are buying bonds, we are giving them for uh, forex. Mm, yes, sir. Mm. But then we get periodic payments, which are coupon payments. Or if not, if, if we do not get a coupon payment, we get a we get a lump sum at a, at the end of the maturity. Achha, so, okay. Now there is talk going on. It was in paper also decriminalization of minor offences. Mm? Yes, offences which are not fraudulent in nature and all. What does it mean? Sir, I do not remember the context in which this has been, but from a layman's perspective, I would say that uh, there are certain offences which can be categorized as major or severe and where the other offences are of a minor nature, sir. So, the offences of minor nature which has a probable cut-off date, they can be actually like, moved over, not under the aegis of court systems, but then um, alternative mechanism can be established so that these are not decriminalized. What is that alternate mechanism? 
sir i'm unaware about it but if i were to take a guess we can go for like we can move for like alternate dispute redressal mechanisms like out of court settlement as it is followed in the us however sir this is based on my analysis and i'm unaware of the factual details of it okay this uh, because of this conflict and all uh, russia also is requesting india for collaboration in scientific field heard of that no sir i am not aware hmm. about this certain uh, the bengal chief minister has been in news with respect to uh, in investment push yes sir you familiar with this yes sir can you tell me more about this so the conventionally if we talk about west bengal as a state it hasn't been able to attract investments as such because of a very socialistic and a pro communist line of ideology that has been prevalent as well as there are lord law and order and other issues which make bengal not a very favorable investment decision however the current bengal chief minister honorable chief minister mashimati mamta banerji is like pushing hard for bringing investments to the state the vibrant bengal summit which is organized yearly and then there is a biannual some there is a there is a biennial summit on sector specific investments which are being conducted so there's an investment push that is being undertaken by the chief minister sir. can you tell me some uh, recent uh, investments that has come into uh, bengal the big ones fdis which has come into bengal sir i am unable to recall you are unable to recall what is the status of relationship between the state and the governor right now india follows a model of federalism sir wherein the center and states have powers distributed among them sir the governor we has expected to act as a lin- as a linchpin between the two wings of the government sir however in states where we see there is a div- there are different political parties for example if the political party at center is different from the political party at states there is a system of cooperative federalism which gets transferred to the f- system of a cutthroat or a frictional federalism sir so bengal is one such example of frictional federalism and the governor is is the one who is actually caught in between this Uh, British Prime Minister's visit yes, sir. last week. Yes, sir. Can you tell me the key outcomes and uh, key agreements that has been signed in this visit? Sir, I am unable to recall the exact details, sir. Okay. Uh, Akash Institute. Is it Akash or is it Baiju Akash now? Sir, Baiju has like taken over, like bought Akash for one billion dollars. What is the impact of uh, acquisition of Akash by Baiju? How has it changed Akash? so the capital infusion has been huge sir and akash now has a bigger brand name attached to it and on top of that the baiju's family covers a lot of sectors so akash would get a philip when a dedicated je and a neat preparation would actually merge with the baiju's neat and je platform sir and on top of that sir the with the acquisition of akash by baiju we see that the profile of akash as a coaching giant in this sector has actually leapfrogged some of its competitors sir Do you think the tech sector has to be subjected to uh, monopolistic re- regulations because Baidu has become too large with uh, too many presence? Sir, so, I am of the view that monopoly uh, helps no no system in progress, and at the same time, I am of the opinion that the biggest losers in a case of a monopoly are the customers themselves, sir. So there must be some certain certain sort of like regulations that can be brought in the domain, sir. Okay, uh, one of your hobbies is blogging. Yes, sir, what is this? So, blogging is an activity which combines jogging with picking up litter, sir. So, it's an environment-friendly physical activity. Where have you done this, and how often do you do this? So, I I started at this activity when I was in Pilani in 2016, and I com- did this activity in Kolkata or in 2018. However, after pandemic, I have lost touch with this activity. But I plan on resuming it very any time soon. But then I need a couple of other people as well. So, it, so do you do it as an individual or do you do it as a group? it's mostly done as a group sir because there's one person who has to be holding a like trash bag and a other person who has to be like picking up waste and then it will cycle between the two people it can be done individually but the it won't be as effective as if unless it's like as it is done in a group sir what kind of uh, safety precautions and uh, equipments do you use for blogging sir we use the crowbar like a modified version of a crowbar for picking up plastic litter sir we use gloves masks are very important then proper footwear footwear com- like which can cater to both running as well as like going deep in litter sir and at the same time sir certain people have been advised to use goggles as well sir and the plastic bag which we use for like picking about holding trash must be more than but must must be a thicker one sir it must i if i if i'm not wrong i recall it to be around 75 microns minimum 75 microns bag it was also recommended by couple of people sir 
there's different color coatings for waste baskets and waste covers also yes sir can you tell me what is it what is the difference because waste covers also come in green blue black same applies for waste baskets also what what do you understand by this so i am unable to recall the exact color like which color stands for which category of waste but what i can recall is there are different categories of waste for example recyclable recyclable and biodegradable and the long end use uh, plastics and also this is what i can recall sir okay um playing and watching football what are your expectation out of the world cup that's coming so i expect it to be even better tournament <coughs> sorry i expect it to be an even better tournament than the one in that was held in russia in 2018 sir and this tournament is very significant because after 2002 it is the first time the tournament is being played outside of europe or south america and so there has been some certain issues relating to human rights crisis which was involved in like qatar building its stadiums and all especially with respect to the death of over 1000 migrant laborers sir so i hope that such an issue is also being addressed and a clarification is made on this sir overall i expect that the world cup which is to be held in november december turns out to be a very enjoyable experience sir during the last yeah. world cup i think there were certain rules were changed uh, with respect to the competition are you familiar with this sir i remember the rule uh, the offside the introduction of offside sir i cannot recall any other major rule that was being changed sir so fifa is subjected to a lot of allegations of corruption and uh, even the qatar getting the venue as a world cup uh, host is uh, subject to allegations what do you know about this so there have been accusations that the top brass of fifa the president and executive vice chairman they have been like dealing in illicit money so as to grant a favor a certain country from getting sponsorship sir so this is a major accusations that has been in place and the committee on arbitration on sports casts is actually investigating this right now sir okay thank you sir uh, what has been the impact of russia ukraine crisis on fertilizer prices so based on my limited knowledge and my reading of the newspapers i i remember reading an article where it was talking about the rise in fertilizer prices because certain chemicals which they came from the region was actually supply chain was of that because those chemicals were impacted so this is a very important will problem. it have any fiscal impact also uh yes mm -hmm. sir because government the to the contain the rise pr price rise sir the government might have to increase its subsidy so that might hurt the fiscal math of the country sir you have done uh, research on 5s yes, as you are talking about so japanese are said to be process oriented yes sir. right so what do you think is better process oriented or goal oriented sir i am of the opinion that being process oriented is very critical in achieving a task especially if you talk about 21st century and the complex interdisciplinary challenges that we have however at the same time we must not actually lose sight of the goal in favor of like perfecting small tasks so i would actually go with both of them sir what do you think government does is it process oriented or goal oriented so for a very long period of time in india the our governments were worked as a goal, as a goal oriented decision planner or decision maker this was evident in the planning system that was in place however in the past couple of decades we see that there has been an adequate focus on process sir. and this has also been attributed to the lpg reforms which actually intended that processes do matter as well and then since then sir even the present prime minister has actually focused on improving processes in as a means of achieving goals final goals sir. Okay. <coughs> so you have stayed in west bengal for a couple of years now yes sir uh, what do you think of ease of doing business in west bengal in general so for a very large period of time sir especially during my stay the ease of doing business in west bengal wasn't at par with the other major financial centers of the country sir there are a couple of reasons to that sir yeah if you watch the couple of if i were to outline a couple of reasons sir number one would be the law and order situation so especially with respect to the land acquisition so this was actually very much difficult then there was a general there was a general climate in the state which was which gave out a vibe that the state wasn't very open to industry the 2007 singur crisis was actually marked that and then sir west bengal as an investment des des destination could not keep pace with other prominent investment des destinations like maharashtra gujarat karnataka and then when the last few years we have seen a very important very nuanced role of syndicate we have called it the syndicate raj so that is also hurting 
investment prospects but the state is on an upward trend in the past 2 years we have seen massive investment uh, west bengal is the second fastest investment growing investment destination in the country sir and i hope that if certain issues are resolved we can actually hope for a very favorable future with respect to investments okay you have uh, political science and international relations as your option yes, right yes what is the russia's objective uh, for attack on ukraine sir russia has dual objective in its uh, military operations in ukraine the first would be safeguarding its own security because the nato wants to set up its establishment in russia and russia being a huge country but most of its population is concentrated on the western side and so any such establishment would bring the major part of a russian population under direct threat from nato missiles and the second would be a, it's a process called a threat of intimidation sir where in russian military operation would be used as a tool to ward off any push by the nato towards russian hinterland sir so it's a dual objective based on russian national interest okay all right uh, in the wake of the russia's attack on ukraine sir uh, certain russian clubs were uh, suspended from uefa yes sir right football club yes sir so do you think sports and politics should be mixed i believe that there has to be certain level of engagement between states and politics and politics and sports and there and a certain level of disengagement sir so sports does not happen in the vacuum of politics sir. political factors do induce so like removing the clubs russian clubs or russian and ukrainian clubs out of ufa's mandate ufa's mandate wasn't a good step sir what could have been done that they could have actually been like a pause could have been made on the playing of the other organizing of tournaments in russia and ukraine or they could have been shifted to another venue where these clubs could have actually taken part sir okay uh, despite india being uh, you know having a population of 1.3 billion people uh, does not do well in football what are the reasons for that so there are a couple of reasons that i can recall the first would be lack of infrastructure and facilities so this is a the biggest impediment that the sport faces in the country the second would be lack of popular icons sir we in we look at a sport like cricket we have sachin tendulkar virat kohli ms dhoni when we talking about when an average person talks about football he'll talk about leo messi or cristiano ronaldo they won't talk about sunil chhetri or they'll barely talk about sunil chhetri or bachan bhutia the third issue would be the climate of the country where in only certain parts of the country especially the monsoon areas which have a, a monsoon type climate strict more strong monsoon type climate sir would actually be conducive for playing football and the fourth would be the uh, would be the genetics the role of genetics has been highlighted by a study wherein people from certain races are not very physically capable of playing sustained sports uh, and football to an extent is an endurance based sport so large parts of our country wherein the climate is very adverse football hasn't been able to grow that much how much distance does the average player uh, cross in football run in football so it depends from the position so usually midfielders are the ones that run the highest Uh, box to box midfielders so they record around 13 kilometers on an average in a match strikers they go a little less around 8 kilometers defenders also hold around 8 to 9 kilometers sir okay last question tell me something about integrated command and control center uh, related to smart cities it is there in news i do not recall about it sir yeah so shubham are you following up politics also uh, yes ma'am on a very amateur level ma'am Okay, and uh, can you tell us what has led to the victory of uh, uh, Yogi Adityanath that he's come back in the second term again? Ma'am, there are a couple of factors that have led to the victory of Yogi Adityanath. One was a very strong pro and incumbency at the ground level, sir, ground level, which was actually visualized. The public tried to, the media tried to present a portrait of anti-incumbency, but at the ground level, sir, ground level, it was a system of pro incumbency. the next would be the welfare and the populist schemes that were pushed by um, the honorable yeah. cm of up the third would be the great support and the great voting uh, voting behavior in favor of bjp by the women of up and especially work has been done with respect to subsidies with respect to L- lpgs l cylinders being given out of free freebies and then pink police booths women security in general has improved in up by a bit so these are the factors that have actually contributed to Mm-hmm. and there's one more factor if i may add is the like usually up is a very caste polarized state but this time the ruling party has won the elections based on a diverse voting pattern based on different castes so 
like a general like a caste based voting has moved on to a more of an a religion based or an identity based voting so do you think what is your view on this change on this shift do you think that it has started a precedent where the voting may start to happen on the basis of development rather than caste so and looking at uh, our country and the dynamics in the politics in the country it is mostly caste based so politics so what is your view on that has that changed or that shift has begun ma'am it is unfortunate that even after 75 years of our independence caste continues to hold a major play in the indian political arena however couple of elections starting from the 2014 elections a bit and then to the 2019 general elections and the recent up elections has indicated a shift towards a development or a populism based voting pattern rather than a caste based voting pattern but still there there is a way we cannot actually ignore the role of caste that is being played in the indian political setup and more needs to be done so that people come out of their caste consciousness when they go out to vote suppose if you are a leader of a political party and you have to choose a candidate for your constituencies so what all factors would you consider while choosing that ma'am there are a couple of factors that i would factor in before selecting a candidate the first would be the winability of the candidate like if the candidate is someone who has a good strong chance of winning from that seat i would actually prefer him another important factor would be the character of the candidate the character candidate a candidate might be winnable but then if he is if he's someone not of a good character it would actually do the party more harm than good so this is an important factor the third would be based on the data and the analytics that i receive i would actually try and gauge the issues and then issue based candidature is also something that is catching up for example in the my home like in my home district of balia uh, bjp lost couple of seats because it did not go for issue based candidature so this is something that i would go and another important factor the la- the factor which i would actually factor in very prominently would be the inclusion of multiple like facets of a society and not be limited to one facet my my selection of candidates would be actually would actually be based on the diversity that our society has and not be not concentrated to one community or one caste as such so calcutta is in news for some bad reasons also so can you tell us that why was it in news not for good reasons ma mai remember post poll violences that uh, occurred after the recently concluded by polls that being a reason any recent news anything i'm sorry ma'am i'm, una- I'm unable to recall okay uh, which is asia's youngest democracy it was in news recently Okay. Um, Sorry, ma'am. No problem. How uh, can you tell us uh, something about the relationship between Pakistan and Taliban now? Ma'am, Pakistan and Taliban are sharing of what we call a classical chicken and egg relationship. Like Pakistan has been a precursor. It has supported Taliban. It has nurtured Taliban. And now, since Taliban is in power in Afghanistan, we see Taliban. and pakistan is having border border disputes along the durand line and frequently taliban has been accused of like pakistan has accused taliban of causing cease fire violations in the region and so pakistan has actually been haunted by the very spirit it actually tried to create so what is the future what future do you see in the relationship of pakistan and taliban ma'am the future of pakistan taliban relations do, do not look very optimistic to me for the very simple reason that the fault lines has been pretty much deep and this is and the primary reason of this is the durand line which has been very hotly contested by the taliban and pakistan is a country which does not which is traditionally not known for like moving out of its position or taking a different stand and this stubbornness in the geopolitical arena has often costed people in the past and it might cost pakistan in the past so if this conflict is to come to an end there must be some sort of solution on the along the durand line okay one last question any some innovation in the field of chemistry latest innovation or development ma'am we can i have recently read about microfiber crystals which are crystals at a micro design level and they are exhibiting a property which is 
slightly different from the parent parent materials and this can actually be used in telecommunications and uh, like op optical uh, especially in the field of optics and this is an important field that i can thank you